Okay, welcome to segment 2.2. Okay, now, here's where we left off. Um, so first, um, okay, so the variance of theta hat, it approaches um, I of theta to the negative one. Okay, so uh, in the limit, okay, as you get infinite data, that's what it equals. Now, remember, I of theta equals, okay, the negative of the expected value of the second derivative of log L of theta. Okay, now... I'm going to give here this very short segment. I want to give some some intuition about why that's true. Okay, let me say I don't fully understand it myself, but I'm going to do the best I can. Okay, first, um, okay, if we have a likelihood function, okay, let's call it um, log of L of theta. Okay, um, well, let's use. Uh, Green is using the expected value of that log of likelihood. Okay, now uh, theta, so we have different values of theta, and um, we can plug those in, and the likelihood function is going to look like this. Okay, actually, let me back up. Um, let's first draw this with. One that looks a little bit more linear. Okay. Now, okay, this should be intuitive. Okay, we pick theta hat. It's the value of theta that maximizes the likelihood function. So, yeah, hopefully that's intuitive. That the, the theta, the thing that seems to maximize this, so the, the likelihood function, remember it's the probability of observing the data that we do. So if we pick a theta that uh, that that best does that, that that uh, best predicts or best describes uh, the probability of observing, it makes sense that if if we get close to the true theta, um, that's going to be the one that's probably going to maximize this. Okay, that, um, uh, that may not be explaining it well, but ho hopefully that's somewhat intuitive. Okay. What I want to explain, though, next is why this variance, um, uh, the variance of theta, is related to the second derivative. Okay. So, um, first of all, notice that if we've maximized it, the likelihood function has got to be concave, at least near when theta is near the value of, of theta hat, okay? So if, if it's concave, okay, it's, it's got to be, or, um, it, the second derivative has to be negative, otherwise we're at a minimum rather than a maximum, okay? So we're trying to get a maximum. So it means that this, the value of that likelihood function's got to have a, uh, a negative second derivative, okay? So that is where we get that negative value, Okay, so we're taking the second derivative of that. We know that the variance has got to be positive. We know that th this stuff, the second derivative, that's got to be negative. So we take the negative of it. So that means the information matrix has got to be positive. Okay, hopefully that explains the negative sign. Okay, now why do we take the inverse of that information matrix? Okay, why do we take the inverse of the second derivative. So if, remember if the log of theta, if theta is a scalar, then that that second derivative of log of theta, if that's a scalar itself. Okay. Now here's what happened. I want you to think of two possible situations. Okay. So um okay, L log of theta in both cases is a function of different values of theta. Let's assume that both cases give us the same value of theta hat, okay? But in this case, we have a second derivative. Uh, we have a likelihood function that has a very shallow curvature or, or a very small curvature 
near that theta hat. That, that, that is, that this curve is almost flat. Okay. Meanwhile, suppose we have in this case a likelihood function with a very strong curvature. The curvature is not nearly being flat, okay? It, it is wrapped around that theta near the, the maximum, okay? Okay, um, your intuition should be that in this case, it makes sense to say we should have more confidence in our value of theta hat. That theta hat is the true theta rather than in this case. And in this case, you know, lots of nearby thetas do almost as well. In this one, lots of the nearby thetas are, are not nearly as well, okay? So the idea is that we should have more confidence, again, we should have more confidence in our, in our estimate in this case than we do in this case, okay? That is, when the second derivative of the likelihood function, actually I'm calling it the log of the likelihood, when it is more curved, okay? So we have... Um, uh, so in this case, we should believe that um, that the variance of theta hat in this case should be should be smaller in this case than that case. Okay. Okay. Now, um, next in this case, the second derivative. Or the absolute value of it is near zero. So the absolute value of the second derivative, okay? So it's almost a line. So the second derivative, if it were a line, it would be exactly zero. I mean, almost a line should, should be almost, or it's, or it's close to zero, okay? In this case, the absolute value of the second derivative um, in this case is large, okay? So in this case, where the absolute value of the second derivative is large, and when I say the absolute value, I mean the negative of it, is large, we have more confidence, and that means the, the, the variance should be smaller. Now the way we get that is we take one over the value. So if that is large, one over its value should be very small, that is what we're talk, calling the variance, so that's, that's why we should have, we should expect the smaller variance in the cases where the absolute value of the second derivative, um, uh, where, where, the, where the absolute value of the second derivative is large, okay? Um, okay, so I hope that gives some intuition about what's going on and why we will use when we want to compute the variance of, of theta hat or estimate the variance of theta hat, we will use the information matrix, which is, which is the information matrix equals the negative of the Hessian. The Hessian, okay, that's when we called it H, okay, in the, in the last session. The Hessian is the second derivative. It's the second derivative of the log of the likelihood. Okay, and we use the inverse of the Hessian. Okay, it's easy to forget. We use the inverse of the Hessian. Now, the final thing, um, notice that uh, we used the second derivative of the log of the likelihood. And you know what? I don't have any good intuition of why that's true. I think someday I'm going to try to reread those green pages, try to get something. Why it's the log of the likelihood, not just the likelihood. Or why it's not some other function of the, the likelihood. But for some reason, um, it is log. You use log, and some smart people have proven that if you use the log of the likelihood, you get some magical properties. So specifically, the, the second derivative of the log of the likelihood. Okay. So, uh, don't forget that. When we start doing homework problems, you're going to have to remember you take the second derivative of the log of the likelihood of the function. Okay, so don't forget that. Okay, see you in video 2.3.